and welcome back. <laughs> Mr. Groper is going off. Uh, anyway, in this video, we are going to explain everything you need to know about setting up a turtle tank. It is super, super easy. It's gonna cover pretty much all Australian species of turtles. So in Australia, we have a wide range of turtles. Most of them get pretty big compared to a lot of turtles throughout the world that stay super, super small. The smallest turtles you're gonna get legally in Australia are gonna be like hand size, which is that size there, a decent size. So this is a four foot tank, so 120 centimeters uh, by 15 inches by 18 inches. So what's that, 38 by 48, something like that in centimeters. Yes, this is gonna be suitable for between one and four or five baby turtles. As they mature, you wanna actually upsize and go a bigger tank as well. Eventually you wanna get something that sort of size, which is a six foot by two and a half by three foot for one adult turtle in most of the species. Turtles I have in here are Australian painted turtles. So they're one of the smaller species. They're still gonna outgrow this tank super, super quick. So within a couple of years, they're gonna be almost hand size and yeah, they will have to go into a bigger tank, but we do have lots of bigger tanks. So we might put them in something that size, obviously minus a giant catfish in there and set up a cool display for them. So this is the basics that you'll need. You'll need two different types of lights and I'll go through the lights a little bit more in detail in this video as well. But we have a UV light here. So this is UVB and it's just like a normal fluoro fitting with a tube that goes directly to the water. You don't want glass lids or anything like that on top because the glass is gonna absorb the UVB from the light and the turtles need the UVB light so they can absorb calcium in their diet. So it's super important that you don't have glass, perspex, plastic or anything like that. If you're worried about sort of things getting in like kids and cats and all that sort of stuff, you can have chicken wire and have mesh on top. You also have to make sure that your turtles can't climb out and as the turtles get bigger, and you've got things like docks like this, they can easily climb out once they get a little bit of size to them. So chicken wire or mesh over the top, you're still gonna get your heat, which this is a heat light here, which I'll explain in a second to you, and you're still gonna get UV going through the mesh. So I'd recommend some sort of mesh covering on top just to make it safe for the turtles and the fact that, yeah, you know, they can't get out. So this tank has only been set up in the last week, work in progress, there's no cats here, there's no kids here. Hence all my cords all over the place. <laughs> Don't do that at home. That is your UVB lighting. This is UVA and UVA is pretty much just a heat lamp. You want a dock. This is a floating turtle dock and I will go through these a little bit more in detail in the video. All it does is it floats up and down with the water level and gives you a basking area for the turtles. So most Australian turtles want this heat area in the high 30s. They will come out of the water, they will bask, heat themselves up, then go back in the water. You also want the water heated. So we have an aquarium heater here, different size heaters, which I'll explain further in the video again for different volumes of water and that. But the heater will maintain your temperature and we want the temperature about 25, 26 degrees for the bulk of the Australian reptiles. Australian turtles, they are reptiles, so Australian turtles. Water temperature 25, 26 degrees, the basking temperature you want in the high 30s. No higher than 40, they'll heat themselves up to their optimum, which is about 32 to 34, then they will go back in the water. You wanna keep everything super simple in the tank. So filtration wise, you don't want sort of little gaps where they can wedge under stuff because turtles are notorious for digging under things, rocks collapsing and all that sort of stuff. Your filters like that, you want it raised above the bottom so they can go underneath it. So filtration in this tank consists of an internal power filter. So that is an 800 litre an hour filter and it's pushing the water around so they've got a decent flow to swim against. It's super important to have the flow, otherwise the turtles are not going to actually be getting any exercise. They're just gonna be going up and down and drifting around and they won't have anything to swim against. In the wild, most turtles will have currents and all sorts of stuff. They can go into creeks, they can go over land, into dams. They get a lot of exercise in a tank. You sort of want them to get the same sort of exercise for their health. That is your internal filter there, pumping the water around. The useful thing with these is they also pick up a lot of waste before it goes into your main filter. And our main filter is a canister filter. So if you haven't seen the canister filter video I've got on setting one up. I'll have a link in the end of this video for you. Super easy to set up, but that is a canister filter there. Ignore my dirty floor. We are currently trying to tidy up, but you know, not enough hours in the day. So the canister filter will grow good bacteria. And all it's doing is the water is going into the filter, 
going through all your filter media and then back into the tank. So that will grow a lot of good nitrifying bacteria and the nitrifying bacteria is the stuff that makes the water good. We're hitting it super simple for you. Good bacteria in the tank means a happy balanced tank and it's gonna have less problems with algae, less chemical buildup like ammonia, nitrites and all that. So that is the filtration, that is the lighting, that is the heat. Substrate, you want something like a fine sand. Super important not to use normal aquarium gravel. If you use normal aquarium gravel, the turtles love to sort of dig through the substrate and look for food. They're gonna look for leftover bits of food, crustaceans, worms, you name it. It's just their natural behavior to sift through the substrate. They can eat little pebbles and get impacted. And impacted means pebble goes in, pebble can't come back out the other side. So you get a buildup of pebbles inside the turtle, expensive vet, or unfortunately a dead turtle. This is just another method to make sure it doesn't happen in captivity. In the wild, obviously they have all different size rocks in there. And in the wild, I'm sure turtles eat bigger rocks and choke and die. Not every turtle, but it can still happen. So you're just reducing the risk in captivity. So that's why we're using sand. A lot of people will use the big rocks that you can see. The problem with big rocks is if you have a pile of big rocks, all the waste goes in between them, that builds up on the bottom. So, and then that will mess your water quality up. Sand is a lot easier to keep clean. As the turtles sift through the sand, little particles will go into your filters. You really don't need to worry too much about sifting through the sand if you have a fine layer on there. So I think in this four foot tank, there's about eight kilos of sand in there to give you an idea, which I think, what's that? That's about $25 or so for a bag of that sand. And that's a proper aquarium grade sand. With plants and stuff like that, we have a couple of different plants in here. This floating stuff is Amazon Frogbit. Uh, the turtles will eventually eat all of it. So don't stress too much about what plants to use, as long as they're non-toxic. And if they're non-toxic for fish, generally they're gonna be non-toxic for your turtles as well. Um, and we have a little pot of Ludwigia. So the reason we have it in a pot, obviously is because we have a thin layer of sand. There's not enough substrate for that plant to dig into. Eventually as the turtles get bigger, they're just gonna chomp through it, but you can just keep replacing it. Aquarium plants are pretty cheap. They're like about $5.50 a bunch at the filming of this video, and that's Australian dollars to give you a rough idea. And it's good salad for it. Apart from the substrate and that, fish in your tank with your turtles. Now this is where it gets really, really tricky. In captivity, turtles can corner the fish and eat the fish. In the wild, the fish really get away from the turtles and there's no issue because unless the fish is not 100% healthy, it's not gonna get caught by a predator like that. The fish that we have in this tank here are native rainbow fish. So these are Dubalay rainbows or crimson spot rainbows. Rainbow fish are probably one of the better fish to use for an Australian turtle tank. They are fast, generally good at getting out the way. They're not gonna hurt the turtle like certain cichlids and other bigger predatory fish can. And they look nice. So they will get a really nice color to them. There are tons and tons of different rainbow fish, but I would recommend rainbow fish if you're worried about algae building up, like diatom algae, which is the brown stuff that covers your tanks and your green algae, you can put a little bristlenose placostomus in there. They stay small. Not gonna damage the turtle as long as you feed the placostomus. Otherwise they can keep sucking on things if they're desperately hungry. But be warned, because they sit on the bottom, the turtles can come over and keep trying to chomp at them. So you just have to play it by ear with what fish are okay with the turtles that you have. But that will pretty much sum up your plants, your fish, your substrate. So we will go on to ornaments and stuff like that. So you really wanna keep it simple. We have a piece of driftwood here for them. We have obviously the turtle dock that they can come up and rest on. We have a little bridgey thing that they can hide underneath and there is a turtle down the back there. Any pots like that, you don't want holes in them that they can get caught. And you just want nice, easy things like that that they can swim through. Any ornaments with holes in them, if they go into the hole, they might get trapped and not be able to come back out. So you just have to make sure it's super, super simple. If you're gonna have a lot of rocks and stuff in there, you wanna make sure that the rocks aren't in big piles that can topple over. So you can super glue the rocks together to make sure that if the turtle digs underneath in the sand, looking for food in that, it's not all gonna collapse on them. That is pretty much the basics of a turtle tank. With your lighting, obviously, light on the daytime, light off at night. That goes with the heat as well. That groper is going off, it's feeding time almost. Your filtration stays on 24 seven. So filtration and aquarium heat on all the time. Lights on in the daytime, off at night. So you want about 10 to 12 hours of light. You can put them on timers if it's easier. 
But that is the basics of all that. So what we're gonna do now is jump to the shop. I'm gonna show you what these little products are in detail so you know, and then I'm gonna put a lot more information on the screen for you. And I totally forgot about food. I'm feeding these guys the Dimax turtle food, which is just a turtle pellet. Any of the turtle pellets are suitable for most turtles. You just want something with decent calcium and vitamins and minerals in it. They will also eat a big variety of other foods. Obviously, they're gonna eat the plants that you have in your tank, but you also can feed them like aquarium snails, you can feed them earthworms, you can feed them frozen turtle foods, frozen bloodworms, just a big variety, but it's super important to have something like a high calcium turtle food in their diet as well. I'm not sponsored by Dimax, boo! Come on, Dimax, sponsor me. If 50 people write the word Dimax in the comments, I might get sponsored. No, I probably won't. <laughs> but it is a good food, a huge variety of foods for them. You wanna feed the turtles at least every day. It pays any animal in captivity to sort of go a day or two of fasting, you know, once every couple of weeks. So you don't have to stress if you miss a day or so, or if you go away for a weekend, they're gonna be perfectly fine as long as the filtration is working. But they will cover food. Let's jump to the shop now and we'll go through the details of how to do the lights and all that sort of stuff. And I'm quickly back in the shop to show you a few different options of lighting and stuff like that. So what I've used obviously is the dome light like this and I've got a little 50 watt UVA spotlight and that is pretty much just to give them the heat on the basking area you multiple multiple ways of doing it you can get these awesome bulbs like this one which are uva and uvb so you don't need the fluoro tube that i've got with the uvb tube and you won't need a spiral uvb like that which is another option you can go for and you won't need this so it's just one light does all you do need a decent sized dome light so one of the bigger domes that suspends above it um, and they start at about 80 watts, so they're pretty hot. So you would have to suspend it a fair bit above just so that it doesn't fry the little turtles. So that's why we've gone with a 50 watt bulb because it's closer to the dock. With the docks as well, there are quite a few different size docks. They go all the way from the little mini ones that I've used up to your monstrous big ones. Depends on how big your tank is, how big your turtle is, all that sort of stuff. But as long as they've got access to the dock so they can heat themselves up, you'll be fine. With your fittings as well, countless different other types. These are just a ready wired up fitting that you can get for under $20. And, oh look, it's coming out of the box. How good is that? It is just the ceramic fitting, which I think does up to about 150 watt bulb. So it's fine for those types of bulbs. And it's got a little switchy thing on it. So you just have to suspend that. It doesn't come with the little clampy thing that these ones come with, which you've seen on the tank but it's just another option you can go for. So that's the cheaper way of doing it. Sure, you can use cheaper bulbs than these, but these are a proper reptile bulb. Um, that's the only real difference. So long as it heats up and it's a reflector, so it actually heats, the penetrate, the penetrates, it penetrates the heat onto the basking spotlight, you're fine with that. What you don't want to skimp on is the UVB because they need that to absorb the calcium in their diet and stuff like that for their shell and bones and all other wonderful reptile stuff. So if you've got any questions about that, just comment below. Also, the food I've been feeding them is the Dimax Turtle Formula. Uh, so this is a larger stick and there's usually a smaller one that's there. I think that's back in the next day or so. So when this video is out, I should have them in stock again. And it's just for baby turtles, which is higher protein, higher calcium, lovely bits and pieces in it. But there are countless other reptile foods you can feed them as well. I feed mine a mixture of that frozen food as well as sort of fish meal and all that stuff as well. But that pretty much sums up the heating that you need, the turtle docks and all that. We will jump to filters and heaters. And there are countless, countless ways of filtering a tank. So obviously canister filters like I'm using and the internals, that's pretty much the internal I'm using in there, which is about an 800 liter an hour one. There's minier ones, minier ones, smaller ones. There's different brands, there's all sorts, but you want something of decent flow. So even in like a 60 centimeter tank, which is probably the minimum size tank that you would use for a baby turtle, something like that, which is about five to 600 liters an hour. Sounds like a lot, but that will give you enough flow so the turtle can swim again against it. These are like 500 litres an hour as well, tiny little filters. They start at about $30 or so, go up from there. Countless different types. There is a whole heap up there. There are, yeah, you name it, there are lots and lots of different types of filters like those. That one's even got a picture of a red-edged slider turtle on it. Can't get them legally in Australia, so don't even look at pretty green turtles over here, unfortunately. But red turtles are better. 
Yeah, so that is filtration. So something for them to swim against the current and something to grow your nitrifying bacteria in with your heaters. Heaters are super, super easy to use. You roughly want about one watt per liter. So in the bigger tanks, like you got 200 watts, then you go for 300 watters, and then it goes to your titanium sort of jobs, which I use in my big pools and stuff. Yeah, you shouldn't really need a giant big heater for your turtle tanks, unless you've got delicate turtles that need a decent, decent temperature, and then you jump up to pretty much your Sago heaters, which go to up to 600 watts, and then you can put four of those on a temperature controller. But basic heaters are around that $30 price range. They have a thermostat to them, one year warranty and all that, but that will maintain your temperature for your heater, and for your heater, for your turtle, will maintain the temperature for your heater, but also maintain your temperature for your turtle where you want it. So coming in Southeast Queensland, where we are, for little tropical species like these ones, you want nice and warm. If you've got your tank inside, which obviously most people have a tank inside, you wanna heat your tank inside to the right temperature for your turtle. And then you wanna have your basking platform the right temperature as well. And while we're going through everything we need for a turtle, so the chemical stuff you'll need is something to dechlorinate the water. So this is Prime, which just pretty much breaks down chlorine, chloramine, breaks down ammonia, nitrites and nitrites. So it's one of the more common dechlorinators you can get throughout the world. Works really, really well. You don't really need a dechlorinator that says the word turtle on it. Um, they're just marketed for turtles, obviously, but all the dechlorinators do exactly the same thing. So you need your dechlorinator. You need something to check your pH, which is your acid alkaline. This is a basic little pH test kit. Um, it's just got a little color card on it, a little indicator solution, a little vial. You fill up the vial, match the color on the chart. That'll tell you if your water's acidic or alkaline. For most turtle species in Australia, you want it slightly alkaline, but you do want to know what it is. If it's extremely alkaline, ammonia can be toxic, really, really high pHs, so you want to just know where you are. So there's pH test kit, you've got stuff to adjust the water. Um, I'm using more and more the Seachem acid buffer and alkaline buffer. It works a lot better in reverse osmosis water, which is water without any mineral content to it. But our water being extremely alkaline in Brisbane, like our water's about close to eight in pH, this stuff here works really, really well. Alters your alkalinity, which is the KH. If you don't know what that means, don't stress. It's just altering the water chemistry to bring the pH down and stabilize it. There are lots of different ones you can use, like seven regulators that alter the GH, which is a general hardness as well. Or you can just get sodium biphosphate, that stuff there, which alters the pH, but doesn't alter your alkalinity or your GH. If you're worried about any of that sort of stuff, or you're not too sure, come in and talk to me. We can explain water chemistry to you or comment down below and we can explain it a little bit simpler because that might not have been simple. I have no idea. <laughs> um, but you want something to check your pH. You want to dechlorinate your water. pH will change over time. So if your pH is fine, out of the tap doesn't mean it's going to be fine in a month or a week or whenever because it does change depending on other conditions in the tank so apart from that you can buy this stuff here which is aerobic and anaerobic bacteria uh, that will help getting your tank cycled which means growing through your nitrogen cycle which is ammonia nitrites nitrites yes all that is is live bacteria you want to make sure your water is stable before you pop that stuff in once you pop that in, it takes about six weeks to fully colonize your tank to start breaking down all those chemicals. But to go really, really quickly without getting totally boring with water chemistry, you don't want any ammonia, don't want any nitrites, only want a little bit of nitrates. So if you have high ammonia, high nitrites, make sure your pH isn't too alkaline because ammonia is super toxic. That's what this NH3, NH4 thing is. Below seven, that pH, the ammonia is non-toxic. So you want to know what your pH is ideally. Yes, this stuff was pH sensitive as well. So if your pH swings, you're gonna kill off your nitrifying bacteria and then you're gonna get issues with more ammonia and more nitrites. But putting it simply, something to dechlorinate your water, which is your prime, something to check your pH, which is your pH test kit, and something to adjust your pH, which is either your acid buffer, your regulators, or your sodium biphosphate, your pH up and your pH down stuff. That is pretty much sums up the chemistry stuff that you will need for your water. Let's jump back to the turtles.